And we can start the second day of the Pangenomics Biohacking uh, Conference. The first speaker today is Yang Gao, is a postdoc at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and at Sun Yat-sen University. He's going to talk about ABPOA. ABPOA is an amazing tool and uh, that uh, has been really, really important in making the idea of uh, uh, aligning against uh, graph, a directed graph, uh, useful and also um, extendable to other tools. Because I know that most of the uh, aligner against a graph uh, actually use uh, either ABPOA as, uh, as a routine or as a function or absorb most of the ideas of uh, this main tool. I think that it is a very fitting tool for this audience uh, because there are lots of niceties there that uh, I'm sure you will be able to, to explain. So thanks again, Jan. Please go ahead with your talk. Thanks, uh, thanks Gianluca. And uh, I also want to thank all the organizers of this conference to hold this very uh, wonderful hacking conference. Uh, okay, today I'll be talking about uh, a fast and memory efficient partial order alignment with ABPOA. So first of all, let, uh, let me introduce a little bit about the, the partial order alignment. Uh, uh, POA, uh, this concept uh, is actually firstly proposed in like 20 years ago, in, back in 2002, which was uh, designed to solve the problem of the multiple sequence alignment for the expressed sequence tag and also for the protein sequence. Uh, right now, uh, because of the popularity of long read sequencing uh, and also the, the pan genome graph, uh, POA is now right, uh, widely used in long read error correction and also the genome assembly polishing. And more importantly, more related to our topic today is the pan genome graph construction. So how does POA work in all these tasks? Uh, so basically, uh, let's talk about the, the, the procedures of the partial order alignment. Uh, uh, basically, the input for POA is a set of multiple sequences. And uh, during POA, uh, we, we first need to align the first two sequences uh, by the sequence to sequence alignment here. Um, then based on the alignment results, we can convert to the uh, alignment result to a partial order graph, or we can see it as a directed acyclic graph or BAG. Then all the remaining sequence need to be aligned to this graph uh, uh, by uh, the sequence to graph alignment step. And then uh, with the final alignment graph, uh, we can like uh, to generate uh, uh, whatever we want to use, like uh, the directly use the alignment graph in a GFA format like this. And uh, we can also use the multiple sequence alignment information, which provides all the details between, uh, all the alignment details between each two sequence. And then the third one, we can uh, use the consensual sequence, which is very useful in the scenario of long read error correction. Uh, so among all these steps, the third one, the sequence to graph alignment is the most time consuming and uh, requires the most memory usage. So let's take a further look at this uh, core step. Sequence to, sequence, sequence to graph alignment is actually very similar to the sequence to sequence alignment, the linear sequence to sequence alignment, uh, where we need to fill up to a score matrix during a uh, so-called dynamic programming. The only difference is that uh, in the sequence to graph alignment, uh, uh, the, on the right side, we have the graph instead of the sequence. So for each node, we will have, we could have like multiple precursor nodes. And then while computing, computing the maximum scores, we need to consider uh, the, the, all the precursor nodes for the match and the delete operations, and which makes the Time, uh, time complexity formula becomes like this. 
And uh, for the space complexity, it's still the, the quadratic. It's the, the L times N, where the L is the sequence length and N is the graph node. So based on these two formulas, we can see that if the, the input data set is, is, is very large and the, the length of the sequence is, is very long, then uh, it's got going to be a, a big challenge in terms of both the time and the, also the memory usage. So the question is how to reduce the runtime and also the memory. So in order to, to achieve this, uh, some efforts have been made. Uh, Visa and the colleagues uh, in 2017, they proposed uh, an SMD implementa implementation for POA. Uh, it's called as SPOA. So uh, here, a multiple cells in a SMD vector can be uh, compute, computed uh, at a time. Uh, this parallel computing in SPOA largely reduced the runtime for uh, uh, compared to the original POA. However, the memory usage is still very high because all the cells need to be uh, allocated. All the cells need to be computed. So uh, how uh, can we further reduce the time and also how can we reduce the memory is the question here. Uh, here we developed this AB POA, uh, which is the adaptive banded partial auto alignment. Um, and uh, uh, we actually uh, forward this banded alignment strategy from the, the sequence to sequence alignment, which is very, uh, which is widely used in many other tools. So in AB POA, we, uh, we similarly, we adaptively determine an alignment band for each row. Uh, or we can see we can, we can see for each for each node in the graph we adaptively determine an alignment band and uh, only cells within the band need to be computed. Uh, in order to to calculate to compute the, the range of the band for each row, we need to first uh, calculate the several uh, variables. So the first, uh, first variable we need to calculate is the positions of the left and the rightmost and maximum store cells in all the precursor rows. And we term them as the P left and P right. Then with these two, uh, we can derive the range of the candidate maximum store cells in the current row, which are the M star and MN. Then the last one we need to calculate is the length of the heaviest outgoing paths uh, which is starting from the current node to the end node, which is R. Uh, with all these uh, variables calculated, then we can derive the start and end of the alignment band, uh, uh, which are the B start and B end. So we can see here on uh, the left side in the plot, uh, the blue ones are the alignment bands that need to be calculated, and uh, the red ones are the maximum store cells. This plot indicates that uh, even though we didn't calculate all the cells in the matrix, we can still generate the optimal path within this band. This guarantees the accuracy of the AB POA. Next, we want to further accelerate uh, this step. Uh, we borrow the idea of SMD implementation from SPOA. So we need to convert our base level band into the SMD vector level band. This way, uh, the time complexity of this step uh, becomes like this. Uh, compared to the original one, uh, the difference is that we have this K, uh, which is the cells in each uh, same the vector. And here is the B, uh, it's the average number of SMD vectors. Uh, so we, we talked about uh, how to reduce the runtime of the POA step, but how about the memory? Uh, we, we can see that uh, even though we use the same, the, we use the, the, the binding strategy, we still allocate all the memory for the entire matrix. The space complexity is still quadratic, it's still L times N. So how to reduce memory? The very straightforward idea is that uh, um, we, we can see that uh, the, between the sequence and the partial order graph, uh, the alignment path is always around the diagonal. So the idea is that uh, can we split the sequence and the graph into small windows and we perform POA within each window. Uh, so 
then we can like reduce the memory into a very small ones. Based on this idea, we developed uh, this minimizer based seeding and partition strategy. Uh, there are several steps to, to, uh, to implement. So the first, we, uh, we need to collect all the minimizers for all the sequence like, uh, like this. And then we need to collect the collinear chains of minimizer kits for each two sequence. Basically with uh, like the N input sequence, we will have like N minus one chains. And this is based on the input order by default, like uh, the number one, sequence number one versus sequence number two, and the sequence number two versus sequence number three, um, and uh, et cetera. Then, uh, uh, so for this uh, chaining step, uh, usually we could get uh, only one global chain for like two sequences with very higher, uh, with very high similarities, like this one on the left side, the, all the minimizer hits are on the diagonal. But for some other cases, when the two sequences are divergent very much, so like this, so we need to perform a two-step chaining. Here, the first step, in the first first step, we we use uh, very stringent parameters to perform the chaining. So that we could obtain a series of small local chains like those in the small circles. And then in the second step of the chaining, we chain together all those collinear chains, collinear local chains, so that we can discard those small, small local chains that are off diagonal and only keep the, uh, the chains that are on the diagonal. With all the uh, chains of minimizer hits collected, we can then map to the minimizer position from the sequence to the graph like this. So we, th this links the, the, the uh, positions between the graph and the, the, the sequence. This way we can split the sequence and the graph into small windows. And uh, we have a parameter of uh, 500 bits pair by default so that we can perform the POA in each window. And this way, the time complexity becomes this uh, Li times Ni. And I, Li is the number, uh, the length of the subsequence. And the Ni is the number of the nodes in the subgraph, which becomes much smaller than the original ones. Also, uh, let's take a look at some evaluation results of ABPOA. The first scenario I want to show you is the long read error correction. And uh, we, here we simulated a set of nanopore long reads uh, with different read lengths and the different uh, depths. And because of the long, long read error correction task, we, we, uh, we want the higher uh, the, the accuracy, alignment accuracy as, as high as possible. So, so here we only enabled the, the binding uh, mode. We disabled the seeding mode to ensure the high accuracy. We can see on, in this table that uh, compared to SPOA, the ABPOA with binding uh, has a speed improvement uh, like three to 10 times. And uh, uh, to compute the, the alarm accuracy, we, uh, we used a measure of the consensus error rate. Because, of, because this is a simulated data set, so we can calculate the uh, consensus error rate uh, based on the alignment result. Basically, we can see that the ABPOA and the SPOA, they have very similar alignment result, uh, accuracy. So, so that we can see that ABPOA has, higher, uh, has faster speed while not losing any alignment accuracy. Then we move on to the second scenario of the uh, pan genome graph construction. Here we used uh, a set of HLA DRB1 gene. In, in this data set, we have uh, 12 sequence. Uh, the average length of the sequence is about uh, 13 K bits, pa bits pairs. And we can see that uh, uh, when, a, when we disable the, the CD mode of the ABPOA, uh, the runtime is like this, the two points seven seconds, it's still very fast. But the, the memory usage is very high. It's like, uh, it's almost five gigabytes. Uh, when we enable the, the CD mode, we can see that uh, the memory usage uh, is largely reduced. 
uh, it's about 15 times lower than AB power without the seed mode. And the, the, uh, also the runtime is about 10 times faster. Then on the right side, we can see that uh, here is the alignment, uh, the graph alignment result uh, plotted by the OGVs command. We can see that the two alignment graph is highly similar to each other, which means that we didn't lose much accuracy of the alignment. Uh, next, uh, we tried a deploy on a set of SARS-CoV-2 genome sequence. Here in this sequence, we used the 1,000 uh, sequence and uh, the, the length of the sequence is about uh, 30 kbps pair. Uh, we can see that uh, when we uh, enabled the AB the CD mode of ABPOA, uh, both runtime and the memory usage is largely reduced, especially for the memory. It's, it's about 80, 80 times lower than ABPOA without the CD. Uh, and uh, to uh, evaluate how, uh, whether or not the alignment result is similar enough, uh, uh, so we calculated the, the final graph, the node number and the uh, edge number of the final alignment graph, we can see that uh, uh, those that number, they are very similar to each other. And uh, I have to mention that this is because the uh, SARS-CoV-2 genomes, they are highly similar to each other, which makes the alignment, the partial order, partial order alignment uh, much easier than other sequence. Okay, to uh, conclude here, uh, we developed uh, ABPOA, a partial order alignment tool, which uses a banding and seeding strategies. Uh, it, is, uh, it has fast speed and requires very low memory, uh, it, it, which makes it able to work with large set of long sequence. It's available at the GitHub. Please try it and uh, any suggestions or the feedbacks are very welcome. Okay, I will uh, end this talk by acknowledging the people are listed here and uh, thank you all. I will take any questions. Hello. Uh, Gianluca. Hi, oh, maybe. Sorry, I was muted. Sorry. <laughs> I apologize. I was muted. Thanks for reminding me that. Uh, first question What potential improvements uh, do you see for the seeded mode? For example, to avoid seeding failures, could you look at the Jacquard index of minimizers between the query? and the entire set of sequences in a given POG segment? Uh, so uh, so the, the improvement, uh, yeah, yeah, let, let me, oh, let me, let me. Uh, Can see it well. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, can, can I repeat the question? Yes. What 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 potential improvements uh, do you see for the seeded mode? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the 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 potential the improvement for the seeded mode is uh, is the biggest improvement is the memory usage. Uh, we can see that. We can see that uh, especially for this, uh, for example, for this set. So the. So memory usage for very long in, in very long input sequence of AB POA is still very large. It's over like four gigabytes for this, this for this set. However, with the seeding modes, when we use a very small seeding window, the memory is constrained with a, like a constant value. It's about several. Uh, it's 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 below one gigabytes. So. It enables ABPOA to run on very large, very long input sequence, like this kind of the SARS-CoV-2 genome, which is about 30 mm. K bits pairs. So for clarification, for clarification, I, I, I was referring to the 
the failures that occasionally occur, you, you mentioned, um, it, it, could this be because you're looking at just the last sequence in the partial order alignment when you do the seeding? And, and could you maybe look at more sequences to try to reduce the probability of failure? Oh, the, the failure, the failure of, of which one? I, I didn't, I didn't. Of the seeding. It's, it's okay, we can discuss it offline, actually. Okay, okay, okay. If there's yeah, other yeah. questions, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, next question is, <clears throat> what is the advantage of using a VPOA over simply using any known uh, multiple sequence alignment algorithms and then turning the MSA into a graph? Oh, uh, so basically, uh, so when the ABPOA was proposed in 2002, it, 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 is, uh, it was compared to other like uh, 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 traditional MSA alignments. I think the, the biggest improvement is the biggest advantage is the runtime. Uh, because uh, ABPOA, you, we, we can see that the ABPOA is, uh, uh, the POA is a simplified uh, version of other multiple sequence alignments. But there's no like uh, uh, progressive uh, getting tree uh, step, uh, building the getting tree step in, in POA. And we simply use the input order as the alignment order. Uh, like for example, in other, many other uh, MSA tools, they first build uh, the progressive guide tree to obtain the, the higher alignment quality. But here uh, in the scenario of long read error correction of the prime genome graph, oh, uh, especially in the long read error correction uh, scenarios, the input order does not matter that much. So we, we do not have this step. So uh, if you want to align the, like uh, the protein family sequence, uh, the traditional methods of the MSA uh, tools may, be, may, may provide the better alignment result, but for the running speed, the POA and the, the AD POA will be the better, will be the better choice. Okay. The question is, is your approach and the tool optimized for a DNA alphabet or can be extended to larger alphabets such as amino acids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm, uh, I have uh, the latest version of the ABPOA it is now able to work with uh, amino acid sequence. We have extended the alphabet to like, the, actually it's not 20, 20 it's 26 all that alphabets can be fit to uh, ABPOA, it, it, it is. It is. Okay. What is the maximum window size that it is feasible to use? Well, that's, uh, that's not, uh, that's really, that's a very good question. It's not very easy to decide what is the optimal size of the window. Uh, yeah, I, I assume that uh, he's asking about the, the minimizer based uh, uh, the seating, the partition, the window, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's really, yeah. So uh, based on the conversation between me and Eric, uh, so he suggested that the, a larger, a larger window, which will lead to like better alignment results. Uh, but uh, in the other, in, on the other side, which will lead to a, sl a, a slower running speed. So um, it's a trade-off between the alignment accuracy and the run speed. So it's not easy to have uh, like a one optimal parameter like that, that, is, that is suitable for all the data set. So it, it's hard to say, yeah. Yes. How, how are you mapping the sequence minimizer to the POG efficiently in your CD mode? Uh, Sorry, map the minimizer to the POG. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we we actually we didn't map the minimizer to the POG. We only uh, collected the map the of the uh, minimizer between the sequence, and we have this step of the map the minimizer position from sequence to the POG, because the the sequence is. It's in the POG. The, the POG is built with the sequence. And so uh, we can map the minimizer partition from the sequence to the POG so that we get the link between the sequence and the POG. So we didn't do the mapping directly between 
two concerned children. I think I, uh, I hope I answered this question. Okay, thanks. And we have the last this for the moment question. Could you adapt a report to align graphs to graphs? Well, uh, yeah, I've uh, considered that, but um, I think this is more like uh, complicated to uh, than the sequenced graph because to uh, first of all to calculate the, the band if the, the like the sequence the sick the graph is here the band is going to be like uh, a little bit more complicated and uh, then uh, so i think so this is hard to it, it's hard to implement first and then the scenario of using this graph to graph i think if, uh, at least for the uh, long read error correction scenario, uh, the sequence to graph alignment is enough. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about which scenario uh, needs this graph to graph. Yeah, yeah, we, we, uh, I think we can talk this, uh, talk about this offline. Yeah, I, 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 right now I don't know which kind of uh, scenario really needs this graph to graph. Yeah. So the answer, simply answer is no. We we cannot do this in Power right now. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. So the I, I I suggest everybody to go on using the metrics rooms uh, even after uh, the session is over, so that we can continue this very nice and useful discussion. I think that uh, I thank again. Uh, well, maybe there are some more questions at the last minute. Let's see. Somebody is, uh, is writing right now in the, in the matrix room. Okay, okay Eric says that uh, the, uh, the alignment, the graph to graph alignment uh, might help for large uh, input sequence sets. Okay. And, uh, and then, then we'll see if uh, another question arrives. Okay, okay, because last even because it makes the number of alignment a logarithmic order. Okay, but I think that uh, this discussion can go on uh, offline. So thanks again, Jan, a wonderful beginning of the second day.